Each branch of the military has its own core of attorneys who are called JAGs or Judge Advocate Generals. JAGs are officers and they can either be active duty or members of the National Guard or military reserves. In this video, I'll go over the process of becoming an Air Force JAG and I'll also talk about some of my experiences going through that process and getting accepted as an Air Force JAG on active duty. And I'll also answer some of the most common questions that I get about becoming a JAG, such as whether the Air Force will pay for your law school and how long the service commitment is. There are a handful of ways that you can become an Air Force JAG, but the most common way is through direct appointment once you've already finished law school. So that's the way that I will focus on here in this video. All right, so let's get to it. What's up everybody, I'm Ashley Noel. On this channel, we talk about military lifestyles, leadership tips, and tips for living and working abroad. So if any of those topics interest you, please make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Again, there are several ways that you can become a JAG. If you're already an active duty commissioned officer in the Air Force, then you can retrain from your current career field into the JAG Corps through a program called the Funded Legal Education Program, or FLEP. And in that case, the Air Force will pay for you to go to law school, and you'll also incur a new service service commitment upon retraining as a JAG. But most people come into the JAG Corps through direct appointment where they're coming in from the civilian sector. And so since that affects the most people, that's the process that I'm going to focus on here. All right, so let's talk about the application process. You can start your application process during your final year of law school, or you can wait until you've already graduated from law school and passed a bar and start your application process at that point. The key thing is that you won't be able to start officer training school until you've already graduated from law school taken and passed the bar exam in at least one state or territory and sworn into that bar. For me, I didn't apply right out of law school. I had already been out and about working in the civilian world for several years before I decided to apply to the JAG Corps. So I had already passed the bar exams and sworn into the bars of California, New York, and DC before I decided to go down that route of becoming a JAG. Pause me for a second. You only need to be licensed in one state or territory to become a JAG. I just like options, as I was. It isn't uncommon at all to apply once you've already graduated law school, so don't let that time gap from when you've graduated law school and when you're thinking about applying deter you if you are considering a career shift. You'll complete the application online and you'll submit a one-page motivational statement on why you want to become an Air Force JAG, a resume, a full-length head-to-toe photograph of yourself, your law school and undergraduate transcripts, your LSAT report score sheet showing your LSAT percentile, your bar certificate letter of good standing if you're already a licensed attorney and as optional submissions you can include a writing sample of up to 10 pages and up to five letters of recommendation if you're prior military you'll also submit your dd form 214 and any past oprs or eprs in order to be selected you have to get through a selection board which is a panel of people who come together and look at everybody's application packages to determine who's going to make it the selection board meets in april september and november of each year so you'll need to submit your online application package package on or before the 10th of the month in the month prior to the month that the selection board meets. I know that that was a lot of words, so let me write it out to explain it. So if you're applying to meet the April selection board, for instance, you'll need to have your application submitted on or before May 10th. If you're applying to meet the September or November boards, you'll need to have your application in by August 10th or October 10th, respectively. Step two is the Staff Judge Advocate or SJA interview. You'll need to do an interview with the Staff Judge advocate at a nearby Air Force base. Everybody who applies has to do an SJA interview. So when you're going through your application package, when you're applying online, you'll be able to select which Air Force base is close to you and a representative from that legal office will give you a call to schedule the interview so that you can come in and conduct it with the SJA. At the time I applied, I was living and working in Washington DC. So I did my SJA interview with the SJA at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland. And once you complete the interview, the SJA will draft up a report based on the interview and send that directly to JA headquarters. Once the application process is complete and the SJA interview is complete, then all you have to do is wait for the selection board to meet and determine whether or not you made it. If you did make it, then they will submit your name up to Congress to officially commission you as an officer in the United States Air Force. Step four is officer training school or OTS. After you receive your commission and become an officer in the United States Air Force, 
then you will go to OTS or Officer Training School at Maxwell Air Force Base. And this is a nine and a half week program where you will go through physical training and classroom based training with all of the other incoming Air Force officers from the various different career fields. Honestly, this time right here and also squadron officer school, which you'll also do at Maxwell Air Force Base, but you'll do it as a captain before you go up for your major selection board. Those are the most fun times that I've had in the Air Force. It's challenging at times and it'll suck at times, but it's also really fun. So enjoy your time there at OTS. Step five, which is the last step in the process is JSOC, which is the Judge Advocate Staff Officer course. After you finish OTS, then you will report to your permanent duty station, and then you'll come back to Maxwell Air Force Base for JSOC. This is another nine week program, but this training program is only for incoming JAGs. OTS is designed to teach you the basics of being an officer in the United States Air Force, but JSOC is designed to teach you the basics of being a military attorney. Once you complete JSOC, and then you'll head back to your permanent duty station and you'll get to work. Now to address some common questions about being an Air Force JAG. Does the Air Force pay for law school? If you're coming in through the direct appointment program, so straight from the civilian sector, then no. However, once you get in, then you can receive up to $65,000 pre-tax over the course of your first four years to go towards your student loan repayment. That money will be paid directly from the Air Force to your lender. This is a program called J Slurp, and you're gonna have to apply for those funds each year. Next question, how long is the service commitment for an officer in the US Air Force JAG Corps? If you're coming in on active duty, do you initially sign a commitment to complete four full years of active duty service and four years of inactive service after that, which basically just means that they could potentially end up calling you back. It's a long shot though. They probably won't do that, but you do sign up for essentially eight years of time with four years of time being actual active service. After you complete that time, you can choose to separate or extend your service. I've already made an entire video on the major differences between being a civilian attorney and a military attorney, so make sure you check out that video. I will leave a card above my head so that you can access it, and I'll also leave a link to it in the description box below. Really quickly, I'm going to show you from the Air Force's main website how to navigate to that JAG Corps information. You'll start by going to airforce.com and then you'll click on the tab that says careers and then you'll scroll down and you'll see specialty careers and you're going to click on JAG and this brings up the JAG Corps careers homepage. So from this page you can learn a lot of different things about being a JAG such as the history of the JAG Corps, the benefits that you'll be eligible for, but if you click on this tab apply for JAG It'll take you to a new page where you can click on apply now. And this brings up the application portal. So this is where you'll actually go to fill out your application for the JAG Corps. And on here, it has everything that you need to submit with your application package, as well as the instructions to submit. But if we go back one step to the JAG Corps careers page and we click back on this overview tab, if you scroll down, to this banner here where you can click on the button that says view all bases. This will bring up an interactive globe where you can see all of the different bases where you may end up being assigned. So you can either click on US, Europe, or Asia to see the different bases, but if you click on USA, then all of these dots show all of the different bases around the US where you may end up being stationed. So for here, we have Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, there's Barksdale Air Force Base in Shreveport. You've got Keesler in Mississippi, McDill in Tampa, all of these different bases. You can see where they're located on the map. If you want to see the bases that we have in Europe or Asia, you can click on these buttons here. Also, Alaska and Hawaii, you can click on those buttons here. I'll leave a link in the description box below to the official Air Force JAG Corps career page so that you can get all of the information that you need directly from them and also link to the application portal. If you like this video or if you learned something new, please make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. It is completely free to you and it does actually help the channel and lets me know that the information that I'm providing is actually useful. If there is any military specific topic that you would like for me to talk about, please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section below and I'll answer whatever questions that I can. I do appreciate your time. I thank you for being here and I'll see you.